Hello and welcome to episode 5 of my Getting Started with C course. In this episode we're going to be having a look at for loops, or actually loops in general, and how we can use them to A, look through arrays, or B, just to simplify our logic a little bit. So let's get started. All right, so in the last episode we had this, um, we were just looking at basic arrays about how we could assign values and get them back out again later. Um, so we're going to leave that for now, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. So in whatever your editor that you're using, just create a new file. Uh, let's call this one loops.c because we're going to be looking at loops. And we're going to start discussing what we think loops are. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up a new script here. So we've just got a pretty normal uh, main function, uh, including the input output header. And I've also initialized an array here. So I've just created an integer array with five values. Um, and set those values equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, the first problem we're going to try and solve is, what if I want to print all of the values that are stored in an array one by one? Well, the obvious solution that is probably pretty easy to see is, well, we can start off by creating a printf statement. And of course, we need to specify that we're trying to print a number. So let's put a uh, number specifier. And then we're just going to provide printf with, say, the first value of our array. And remember that we count from zeros when we are using arrays in C. So putting zero in this index modifier, we'll get the first element of the array or one. So if we save this and then we just come down and we compile it using gcc loops.c and then we're just gonna put this in loops.exe. Uh, okay, so we've got a compile error and that is because, um, why is that? Oh, it's because my loops file is in the wrong folder. Hold on, okay, running that again. Okay, perfect. And so now if I run the loops program, you'll see that we indeed get one printed to the terminal, which is what we expect because we've printed this first element, which is one here. Now, if we go ahead and copy this print statement and we can paste it again, and now we can use one to get the second element of this array here, which happens to be two, and we can save it and we can recompile it and running our program again, you'll see that now we get the first element printed and then we get the second element printed. So one, then two. Now, as you can see, this gets a bit tedious because if we wanted to print every element in this array, we would need five print statements in a row and that looks a bit messy but also you can imagine you can imagine a scenario where we don't already know how many elements are in an array or we don't really know or maybe it's hundreds and doing a bunch of print statements when the array size can change is just not going to work so how do we handle that situation well this is a great candidate and probably one of the most common use cases for loops essentially a loop is a way of running a block of code over and over again until a certain condition is met the most basic loop is a while loop. Okay, so this is a basic while loop right here. And what this does is it just infinitely loops um, because one is considered to be a true value. So essentially this loop is just saying, whilst this is true, which it always is, um, run whatever code is in between these braces. Now, if we use a while loop here, we could certainly put a print statement. Uh, let's just print some text with a new line character, okay? And you'll note that when we run it, something, well, some of you might expect what's going to happen here, but if we run this code program as it runs, we just infinitely, it just infinitely spams the line some text into the console because this loop here is just running over and over again and it's running this code every single time it loops. And so now we're just getting infinite text spam. If you ever accidentally create an infinite loop in your project, um, you can generally use control or command C in the command line to force the program to stop execution. Alternatively, you can just close your terminal and open a new session. Okay, so a while loop here might not be the best choice. And actually, when you're working with arrays, the loop that you almost always will want is a for loop. Okay, so a for loop follows the same basic syntax. Generally, it will look something like this. For int i equals zero, i less than five or some number, i plus plus. And then of course, a loop always needs a code block here. So you always wanna have a code block defined for your loop so that it loops the stuff in between these brackets. Okay, so let's break this down. This is a lot more complicated looking than our while loop. Right, so what a for loop is supposed to do is iterate through every item in a certain collection or through every number in a certain range. And if we break this statement down, we can start to understand a little bit about how this for loop works. Firstly, we know that this is a variable initialization. So we declare a variable called i and we set it equal to zero. Then we check that whether or not i is less than some number. In this case, we're checking if it's less than five. After that, we use this i++ syntax and plus plus just increments a number or adds one to it. So how does this all work? Well, 
basically, when your loop starts running, it will first initialize this variable. It will create this variable, okay? And then for as long as this condition here is true, the code inside will get repeated, okay? This last statement gets run at the end of every loop. So it's a little bit tricky to keep track of because the syntax is not necessarily obvious, but this is pretty much what every for loop you'll ever write looks like. Okay, so let's break this down. At first, we come to our loop here, we create a variable called i equals zero. And when i equals zero, we know that, well, zero is less than five, so the code inside this loop will run. Then, once we've run that code once, i will get increased by one. And then we will come back around. And now i is gonna be equal to one because zero plus one is one. And one is still less than five, so this code runs again and then i is increased by one once more. And so now i is going to be equal to three, and three is still less than five, so the code will run again. Now, we can simplify this, or just at least see how this works, simply just by printing i to the terminal. i works like a normal variable decoration. We can just use it however we want. So if we, say, print a number to the screen, and just give it i as our reference, okay, then what we should see when we run this code is, well, let's just see. So compiling our loops program again and running it, you'll see that we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is exactly what we expected. We start off with i equals 0. Then on the next loop through, i gets increased by 1, so i equals 1. And then we add 1 again, i equals 2. And then we add 1 again, i equals 3. And then we add 1 again, i equals 4. Now, why don't we see 5 here? Well, because when i equals 5, this statement is no longer true and the loop stops running. So this only runs whilst this middle condition is correct. Now, this syntax is basically the same every time. So if you forget it, just search for for loop or see for loop in Google uh, or your preferred search engine and just use the same syntax. It's very similar. Um, it's important to note that if you have two for loops inside of each other, however, you're going to need to change, like one could be i and then the inside for loop you could use j. You can't use i for every single loop because you'll confuse your computer. So how can we use this to print all of our numbers in the array? Well, if we know that we have five elements in our array, then we can just say whilst i is less than five, print, and then we're going to simply print array and then that index, okay? Because remembering, the first time around, i equals zero, so the zeroth element of this array is the value one, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make this 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, okay? So on the first loop, i is going to be equal to zero, so we access the zeroth element in the array variable, and that happens to be 10. Then in the second loop round, i is going to be equal to 1, so we access the 1th element, and that's 20. So if we save this program, uh, compile it, and then run it, now you'll see that we loop through. We've got five indexes, which matches the, the size of our array. We loop through five times and print each value. Okay, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, and it's really useful to know that we can make this loop as many times as we want, but if we make this index 10 and try and run our program, we might get some bizarre behavior. Oops, that wasn't, uh, so running our code again here, you'll see that now we got a whole bunch of random numbers. And that's because if you remember back to our arrays element, that this is just sort of incrementing a pointer based on this value. And considering we only have five values in here, we just get garbage values if we try and read past the end of that array. So it's always wise to make sure that these numbers match up. On some operating systems, you might just get a seg fault and it might just be an error. So that's four loops. Now, the other thing is we can also uh, use other conditional statements inside of our for loop. So say we want to um, say we want to end our loop at a certain point. Say say we want to finish our loop as soon as I hmm, I don't know. Let's say that if um, I times by let's say two equals six. Uh, Let's say if this ever happens, maybe we want to end our loop there. We don't want to continue if i times two equals six. Now this could be any condition you want, but it's basically just what if we're in a loop and we want to stop it immediately based on some sort of condition? Well, then we can use something called a break statement. And what a break does is as soon as this line of code runs, it immediately breaks out of the loop that it's inside of. So essentially what we should expect to happen here is this loop will run for a little bit. And then at some point, i times two will equal six. And at that point, we will end the loop abruptly. Okay, so compiling our code and running it again, you see that this time we get 10, 20, 30, 40, but 50 isn't printed. And why is that? Well, because 
uh, by the time i is equal to 3, so remember, this is the zeroth element, this is the first, the second, and this would be i equals 3, okay? So this is the third element per se, because we count from zero, all right? When i is equal to 3, first of all, we print that index, so we get 40, but then we check if i times 2 equals 6. And when i is 3, well, 3 times 2 does equal 6. So then we hit this break limit. We break and the loop terminates at that point. It no longer continues. Now, there's also another statement here called the continue statement. And what the continue statement does is it basically means, okay, if this condition is met, skip the rest of the loop and go back to the, to the start of the next iteration. So now, if we have another printf here, say, and um, after, okay, what's going to happen is every number or every loop we go around, we're going to try and print the number from the array at that index, index i. Then we're going to check if i is equal, i times 2 is equal to 6, and if it is, we're going to use the continue statement. Otherwise, we're going to print after. So what continue will do is when i equals 3, well, this statement is going to be true, so then our continue statement is going to run, and continue will basically skip the rest of the loop. So this line won't run. So it's easier to understand if we just sort of compile our program and then run it again. And you'll see that, okay, so when we start off our loop, i is equal to zero, so we print the zeroth element, and then, so it prints the zeroth element, and i times two is not equal six, so we keep going down here, we print this after. So after every number here, for the first little bit, we get the number and then this line after running. So, you know, 10 after, 20 after, 30 after, but then something interesting happens when we get to 40. It just goes 40, 50, and there's no after. That's because to get 40 here, that's the zero, one, two, three, Okay, that's the third index in our array, number three. Okay, and when i equals three, we know that we hit this continue statement. And continue basically just says, hey, skip the rest of the loop and just start the next loop around. So we just we just skip this line because it comes after the continue and we just go straight back to the start where i is equal to four and we print 50. So remember, so a break, that'll break you out of the loop when we run a break statement. And continue, we'll just skip the rest of it and go back to the start of the loop. They're kind of useful. It's not super common that you need them, but sometimes you do. And finally, I just want to touch a little bit more on why you might want to use a while loop. A really good example of why you might want to use a while loop is in my uh, video on uh, reading numbers from files in, in C. Um, but essentially, a while loop is generally something we use when we don't know how many times we want to loop. We use a for loop if we know exactly how many times we want to loop through something. But sometimes we just don't know when we're supposed to end. So while I don't know, we could have some sort of number here, say like int end loop, for example, and we're gonna start that off as one, okay? So remember that one is considered to be a true value, whilst zero is considered to be false. So we're gonna say while end loop, run. Okay, so right now we've created an infinite loop, um, which is not what we want. Um, but inside it, let's maybe create a character variable and we'll set it equal to get um, get char and get char what get char does is it just waits for input on the standard input basically it waits for text input all right and then all we're going to do is say that if c or the character that has been imported equals the character a, it's important to note that when we're comparing characters this is not a string this is a single character so we use single quotes Okay, so if it's equal to say lowercase x, then end loop is going to be equal to zero or false. Okay, so let's just see what this does. So compiling our program and running it. Okay, now you'll see that not, nothing has happened. And that's because our program is waiting for input. So we can give it a t and we can give it an enter and a y and a h and a j. And we can keep giving it values, but when we when we when we give it an X and hit enter, it closes out. Okay, and that's because initially end loop is one, so this is just set to loop infinitely. Okay, because while one means just an infinite loop, and then inside the loop we ask uh, to get a character from the user on the command line. That's these things that I was inputting on my keyboard, and then we just check if the character is equal to X, and if the character is equal to X then we say end loop equals zero or false as in we do want to end the loop okay and at that point when we try and loop again end loop is now zero so this is now while false so the loop no longer runs
And that's just one example of where a while loop might, might be useful. It's when we don't know how many times we want to loop. So I know this is a speedy episode, but loops are a fairly simple concept and they're easier to learn once you start to see them in different applications. But just have a practice playing around using them to print arrays and just remember that a for loop is when we know how many times we want to loop and a while loop is generally best for when we don't know how many times we want to loop. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do in the next episode, but cheers for watching and I'll be back for more.